Welcome to Audi2, everyone. Hope you are enjoying the sessions that we have curated for you all. As we progress into the day, I'm elated to welcome our next speaker. With the changing dynamics, leaders have designed a comprehensive EX for the workforce. And as we set out to return to the hybrid world of work, leaders have the bigger owners to curate on EX portfolio that suits the workforce for 2022 and beyond. In the upcoming conversation, Tom Diwiley, Global Head of Employee Experience Unilever on designing EX for the hybrid world of work will share the leader's perspective on creating a foolproof roadmap of EX. I would like to invite Somya Dubey, content producer, ETH World to moderate the conversation. Over to you. Hi, Tom. It is such a pleasure to meet you today. I am excited to learn more from you on how uh, we are building an employee experience that really scales up the hybrid workplaces. It's an absolute pleasure to get on this conversation with you. And yes, I'm going to be very mindful of the time that I have, and I will say the little time that I have with you. So jumping straight into the questions that I have prepared. Uh, the first one being that Unilever has been a destination employer globally. And we would love to hear from you on how your employee experience practices have transformed in the post-COVID world of work. Thanks a lot, Somia, and it's a, it's a pleasure to be here. So, uh, absolute pleasure. So, first of all, I think I want to say that employee experience is not only a post-COVID reality in Unilever. It was there pre-COVID already. Um, we have a strong belief as a company for many, many years that uh, people with purpose thrive. And we have a belief for a number of years already that we uh, are, are aiming employee experience is to create that environment that makes people at their best and can drive their purpose at their best. Uh, and that's exactly what we're doing in employee experience. And we started this pre-COVID already, but it's fair to say that uh, while we were doing that, we thought pre-COVID, we thought we are touching the future. Uh, COVID has brought that future to today. So now we're uh, working within the today. Uh, and it's exciting to see that so many more people are thinking around employee experience now and how we need to uh, how we need to do that. It's around it's around treating our employees like customers, like consumers. It's around trying to mirror the experience that we all have in our daily lives as consumers and trying to bring that to the workplace and see how can we make things faster, how we can make things easier, how we can make things better for people at work so that they can bring their passion to work every day and really make that difference. And maybe I can, I can give a few examples of where I believe we're, we're trying to lift that game and where we're trying to uh, bring that employee experience. And you will see some of them are some things that we started already pre-COVID. Some of them are very much uh, things that we have emerged on now as we go in through the COVID period. Um, I think probably one that I would call out is the first one would be around employee support. Those moments, any kind of moment where you need support, uh, we traditionally had a relative siloed approach and a relative traditional approach, and we completely digitized that. We have one single place where people can go in a completely digital format uh, and where people can get help. Uh, and it's amazing to see how it has helped us, uh, first of all, to get support to people faster. So it's roughly around half of the time that it takes to support our people um, through chatbots, through uh, Google search, kind of frameworks, but also through live chat agents, if we really need to need that. So it's, it goes faster and it has free time of time at our side as well. Uh, my people in the team don't have to give that daily support anymore and can focus their time on other things, which is some of the examples that I'm going to give later on. And you know what? It gives us the data as well. We have the data now of what are our people looking for? When are they finding help and are they not finding help so that we can become more proactive and actually uh, make sure that our support mechanisms are constantly evolving, even before people are asking it. We know through the data what we need to do to further evolve it. So that's one example that I would give. Um, I think the other one is uh, around voice of the employee. I think the digital approach gives us the opportunity to be in constant touch with our employees and hear what they are thinking and hear what they are feeling. And that's probably the first and foremost thing. If you want to think around employee experience, the word says it itself. You need to get your employees right in the middle of what you do. Uh, you need to listen to them. Uh, when you design new solutions, they need to be in the room with you. 
and really make sure that whatever you design, it's putting the employees right in the middle uh, of what you do. Um, recruitment is another one uh, where basically we were investing already before around how we can do that, but COVID has made it even more sharper. How do you recruit people faster in a digital environment? How do you recruit people without even seeing them face to face? And how do you make sure that you onboard them and their time to impact when they really can contribute to Unilever is as short as possible. And I guess with investing in a lot of technology there through digital interviewing, artificial intelligent based engines, which are helping us to sort candidates. We have chatbots which are answering questions from people through the process. Uh, and the really one of the most important things for me, you said it in the beginning, we're quite a big employer and we're super happy about the Unilever brand that we have. We receive more than 2 million applications a year. And in a traditional approach, it's difficult to assure that everybody gets that kind of good experience. And digital allows you to make sure that everybody has a good experience when they are applying at Unilever and they get some kind of effect. And I'm not going to say we get it perfect, not yet, but we're getting it a lot better than we used to, than we used to be. And the last example that I was going to give is, is nothing to do with digital, but it's around the combination between digital and human touch. Because by applying digital, the people in our teams now have to spend less time on some of these tasks which are done by technology now and can invest, can reinvest that time into things which are supporting uh, our people and are driving that engagement. And just two examples. Um, some of the work that my team has done through COVID has been real hero work around literally calling hospitals and trying to find beds for people to go uh, for themselves or their families. Uh, really uh, having a network that was supporting our doctors to get the daily questions. People would not have been able to do that if they didn't have the time freed up by technology. Another one is bereavement leave. Unfortunately, during this period, there's too many people that have had this period of bereavement, which is such a difficult personal moment. And our, what we call people experience lead, had this used their freed up time to make that a special moment for people where they can really be there to support, giving them a call and say, how can we help you at this moment? And being creative. We had a number of company drivers, which were basically not really having a job because most of their leaders were sitting at home and working from home. So what do we do? Can we reassign those company drivers to people who are doing a bereavement periods to support them uh, and help them to go for shopping or to drive them wherever they need? It's this kind of creative thinking and combination between technology and then human capacity and reinvest that human capacity in what we call is the moments that matter. Uh, and, and, and that's, that's the, the model at its best, I would say. So in short, um, employee experience was something we were very much focused on already pre-COVID, but COVID has fast forwarded the future to today uh, and has only made our belief stronger that this is the model that we should drive for the future. Wow. I think so many amazing takeaways that came from this one. The honesty, Tom, that you're bringing to this conversation really elevates it for the leaders and our audience who's joining us. So thank you so much for putting out such a clear perspective on that. And I know you mentioned about it, and I would want to go a little deeper that, like you said, that pandemic has accentuated the pace of change. Uh, I would love to know that how have you managed to retain and nurture your workforce and its experience? So maybe if a couple of examples that you could share would really help us. Absolutely, Somia. Let me let me try and, and call out a few examples that um, have made uh, has made a big difference. Um, I think one that I would call out is uh, just in fear, uh, the, the the fact that actually at the start of COVID, and we're talking quite some time back uh, already, uh, but I think through our investment that we have done in in employee experience into digital, into cloud-based solutions. We have shifted 65,000 people across the world from work from the office to work from home in a matter of less than 48 hours. And that would not have been possible if we would not have made the investments that we made before. Um, and our business has been resilient throughout this period of COVID. Uh, and it has helped us to learn how a future of work can look like. And I think many of us have been learning that. So that's just one example. But the, the, the sheer scale of 65,000 people that just shift from one way of working to another way of working in a matter of time uh, of 48 hours is just a massive one. And then again, your digital touch 
can help you. We've shifted all of our support channels to digital, to digital means because literally people are looking at the screen, they're not in the office anymore. So we moved our chatbots. We are an MS Teams based company. So we use MS Teams as a, as a platform. And we said, this is the window to the world of people. So our support chatbot came right within that window. When people had a question, that's right where they needed to do it. When we had health checks for our people, we, in, in, uh, we put it onto the screen there so that people have that digital connection and, and they can use the digital means. And we know at all times uh, about our audience who's uh, potentially infected, where are uh, people at risk, uh, these kind of things. So again, uh, bringing this whole digital framework has, has enormously helped us. I, I did touch on it already. Uh, virtual onboarding um, was, was quite something that came with COVID where you traditionally do your onboarding by inviting people to the office and give them a tour and do lots of things in the office. And that was not possible anymore. Uh, and we found a way to really shift that very fast through a completely digital onboarding experience, again, supported by technology, but also with the right human touch at the right moment. Um, and it's amazing to see uh, when we are now looking at our uh, engagement results, uh, that people who were onboarded during this period, if you look at periods that have le one, less than one year uh, seniority or tenure at the company, actually their engagement that we saw in the last survey is now 12% higher than the joining group that we had in 2019 pre-COVID. So we actually have been able to go with the digital experience and a full digital onboarding experience, but it has actually made even more engaged people that have been joining Unidever. Uh, and actually overall, we're super proud that we have record high engagement scores, which we've been able to attain, uh, retain and even further improve uh, during this period uh, of, uh, of COVID. So just a few examples. And I think the last one I would call out, we had such a big focus on safety and on well-being of our people. We've in anything that we said, look, during this period, safety and well-being of our people is going to be the number one first priority. Uh, and we've done that throughout. Uh, and I've mentioned already the count of support that we gave when people were uh, infected within the family uh, and what we've been there, but also the support that we've been doing in terms of well-being uh, with team energy charters and well-being special days and uh, a lot of different supports uh, really around how do we make sure that people stay safe in this period but equally as well, watch their well-being uh, of themselves and of the teams that they are leading. So, so that's just a few examples of what we've been trying to do as a company uh, to, uh, to help our people. Absolutely. And that's really fantastic to know, Tom. And many congratulations. I think the matrix that you shared are, are really startling and they're very amazing to know because a lot of companies, a lot of leaders are battling in these times. And, when we, and we are actually in a time of the great resignation, if I would say. That's here. I mean, it's already there in US. It's coming to India now. And people don't know uh, that what is the way out from it. And when I hear something like that you mentioned that the people who were onboarded during the pandemic have a 5% higher experience rate, the rating is quite amazing. So big congratulations on achieving that. And that really brings me to my third question that um, in India, I would say it will take some time for us to get back to the normal, uh, if I would say. So as we are preparing to adapt um, to the hybrid workplaces, and this might be a very global approach as well, employee experience will really dominate this experience, I think. The leaders are taking cognizance of it. The employees have become much more vocal in what they want and how they want it. So what are the few critical elements of the employee experience journey that will reflect the success of this model? So if I'm a leader and I want to take away this, uh, you know, like a prime nugget from the session, I would love to know this. Super. Uh, let, me, let me try to give that a go, Samia. So I'll, I'll answer the question in two ways. I'll give you what I believe are four big themes which are going to be super important uh, for an employee experience leader as myself to embrace uh, and for a business to look at. And then I'll give you a, a bit of a touch point of how we are measuring the impact that we're making through employee experience and why we believe we are making an impact. So I think uh, the first one is I believe, especially with COVID, we're going more and more to what I would call a borderless workforce. Um, the way that people are going to be employed is going to become a lot more flexible. Uh, and also uh, where people are going to work and how they're going to be, uh, work is going to be a lot more flexible as well. 
So this traditional of approach of we have people with a fixed contract that are certain sitting in a certain location in a certain office is just not going to be the, the case anymore. It's going to be completely radically changed and it will take some time and some geographies might go faster than other one. But if we don't give a proper answer on that, that great resignation that you mentioned is going to be only greater because whether we like it or not, COVID has made people reflect about what they want to do in the future and how they want to do that because they've seen an alternative. So setting up an employee experience that can work with the borderless workforce is going to be an absolute must, uh, I believe, uh, for, for the future. I touched on well-being and safety already, but it's going to be such an important focus more than ever. If you have a borderless workforce, which are not traditionally getting together in an office anymore, which might be spread around, which are working from home from a, lot, from, from a number of times, the focus on well-being and safety is going to be even import, more important than it was before. As a leader, the job isn't getting any easier because you're now managing a team that is spread across the world, that is, uh, might be working in different formats for you, whether that's a fixed contract or a freelancer or whatever it is. And you have the absolute task as a leader to make sure that that team is thriving. So I would say focusing and empowering leaders to make sure that they have the tools to work on the well-being and the safety of their people is going to be a super big team for me as well around employee experience. The last one is the workplace. I know the third one is the workplace. Um, workplace, call it the traditional office, but I think it's wider than a traditional office now. It's where people do their work and that might be in the office but that also might be at home or that might be close to home, wherever it is. And we need to think around how do we make sure that each of those workplaces is equipped so that people can do their job at their best. And equally, we need to make sure that we can create an environment where we still build social capital together, where we build the culture of us as a company. And that's by bringing people together. And that's why the office design the traditional office design is not going to be anymore, in my perspective, around a traditional office where you do focus work. Now it's going to be around the moment where you bring people together and where you build connections, where you build social capital, where you build culture. Uh, and therefore you need to have a different office. And we are actively already across the world redesigning our offices to play that new role, where you have much less focus on, uh, on space to focus and you have much more collaboration spaces much more spaces where people can come together. Um, and I think that's going to be another big piece around employee experience. How do you make sure that the workplace is supporting people in the way they work? And more specifically, the office, how do you make sure that you design that uh, to celebrate together, to collaborate together, to come together and create the culture of your company? So that's the other one. And then the last one is digital support at your fingertips. I think I talked a lot about it. And I think it's not a nice to have it is a must have. Uh, and, and the reason that I always call out is when I look at my daughter, I have a 15 year old daughter, I have a, a 11, one as, 11 years old as well, but especially the 15 years old, she's with her phone all the time. She's brought up in a different way, uh, in a different world. And I think we all recognize that. And if you think around how things are done at work, and if sometimes I tell her how things are done at work, or used to be do at work, she would say to me, Daddy, that's not the kind of company where I'm going to work at. Really not. I cannot believe it. Um, so I think we have a responsibility to be continue to be attractive for the future talents. Uh, we have to really re look the way that we support our people. And it needs to be digital at their fingertips because that's what they expect, that they will, that's what they grow up to. So I think those are some of the big themes that I believe for employee experience are super important. How do we measure our impact? We measure our impact in a number of ways. So the first one is around absolute focus on employee experience. Employee engagement, what we call net promoter score is a massive one for us. The second one is productivity. Do we make it easier for people? Um, we have a, an ambition and we're well on the way for that ambition to free up one hour every week for every employee that they can reinvest into something which is more supporting their purpose and which is more supporting the growth of the company. So that's another absolute a critical one. Um, we are high on sustainability as well, and we believe we have a responsibility to do so. So the other one is around how can we make sure that we, we completely take out the carbon footprint that we have 
within the area of NT experience. That's the office, that's when people travel, uh, that's um, uh, the different areas across employee experience where we really look the fleet that people have company cars that they're driving. How do we make sure that we uh, take out our carbon footprint? And then last but not least, uh, we are an economical company. So doing that in the most efficient way and improving our efficiency as well is important as well. And how we provide fuel for growth back to the organization. So that's the four elements where we're looking at to see if we're successful. Thank you so much for summing that so beautifully, Tom. And very, very important elements highlighted in this one. So thank you once again. And that brings me, um, and just being mindful of the time that I have with you now left, uh, there is one element that we all are, are aware, we've embraced that the technology has been a bedrock when we talk about the changes that we've seen uh, and the way we've embraced them. So that brings me to a very important question that um, I agree that you know technology will be an underlying factor in this journey of creating a transformational EX. And when I say transformational EX, it might sound very ambitious, but I think that's what all the leaders are aiming for. How can it be leveraged um, to drive a collaborative and a very communicative work environment? I think the times that are going to come now, um, these two terms, the collaboration and the communication will hold the center stage. So would love to hear from you on this. I would say, and invite all of all of us just look outside and see how the world is evolving and working at this moment look at your children and see how they are living their life and you will be inspired without any doubt to see how we should think around how office life should be towards the future that's where i got my inspiration and i think we have an enormous opportunity uh, to make the best combination between technology and a human touch, because sometimes people say that it's a conflicting one. You cannot be human through technology, and I, I don't believe that. There's two ways that you can do that. You can invest into technology. By the way, technology allows you with data to make more personalized experience at scale. That means that I provide a development. I prefer learning recommendations for everybody, but I can make those personalized based on the experiences that you have, based on your pre, uh, uh, preferences that you have. That's what technology can do. It can offer a solution which is personalized for every person. And then second, the thing is that technology does a number of tasks which humans don't have to do anymore. So that means that we can reinvest that time into what humans are best at, which is this human touch. When somebody is joining at Unilever, I don't want my people to be spending time on typing data in about that person into the system. I want them to be at the doorstep and shaking their hand and saying, it's fantastic to have you as part of the company. We're so happy to have you. That's where the human touch can really make a difference. And, the, and as a last one, I would call out, there's a, a risk as well. There's a danger. And we've made a few mistakes in this area as well. Don't fall in love with technology. It's, there's so much technology and it's so easy to fall in love with technology and just put all this technology into the workspace. Before you know it, you will make employee experience even more complicated than it was before you started with technology. You need to be laser sharp around what is the outcome that I want to have. What's the problem that I'm trying to solve? Put your employees right in the middle of what you do. And if you know what you're trying to solve, and if you know what your employees are looking for, then look at technology and the solutions that they can bring. But don't just bring technology in because it's cool to have technology, because you sometimes have the risk of making it more complicated than it was before you start. So I hope that gives a bit of a perspective, Samia. Absolutely. I think you covered both sides of the coin. Thank you so much for that, Tom, because when I asked that question, I was pro-technology, but after hearing you, I'm taking this back with me that don't fall in love with technology. Be sure of what you want to drive out of it, because like you said, you'll end up even complicating it more. So that's, that's something that's very important. And thank you so much for throwing light on that. Uh, that brings me to the end of this conversation, Tom. I think I thoroughly enjoyed um, getting on this call with you, understanding how it works. And I'm sure our audience loved it too. So big thank you once again. And I look forward to uh, knowing and learning more from you. Thanks a lot, Samia. It was my absolute pleasure to be here. Thank you, Mr. Diwali and Samia for an interesting and informative chat session. Let's proceed and enjoy more interesting conversations. Mm -hmm.